It was number one for Wet, Wet, Wet. And the song, of course, is Love Is All Around from the soundtrack of Four Weddings and a Funeral. Delighted to say now we're joined by the drummer Tommy Cunningham. Oh, my producer Luke just did the best impression of your lovely voice. It was ever so nice. So if you get bored of speaking to people, just phone us up and I'll lend you Luke for an hour if you fancy. <laughs> it sounds like fun. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, listen, does it still make you shudder now? I mean, we were, uh, we mustn't reveal what year it was, but we can say sort of it's 20 years plus now. Um, does it still give you a shudder or do you love hearing it? What what happens now, and this is the God's honest truth, is when I hear lovers all around, I don't hear wet, wet, wet. I don't hear, I don't listen to it and think, oh, that's that's Marty singing it or that's Graham playing bass or myself on drums. I hear it the same way as everyone else hears it. It's just a song that now belongs to the fabric, to the background. Uh, it's the musical backdrop to our lives. You know, it's, it's up there. And it sits in that fabric along with so many other classic songs. I don't think of it as being ours. I think of it as being everyone else's. And that's what I hear. I hear the same as everyone else. It's just, there's that song that everyone knows. As soon as you say, I feel it in my fingers, I feel it in my toes, everyone gets it straight away. Wowza. So, at the time, did you have any idea? When they sort of said, do you fancy recording this? How did it work? Who came to you with the idea? The the movie had been finished. um, And... There was a contract signed, believe it or not, with Sting and El- Elton John, who were going to do the song that went with the movie. But there were songs within the film, and they wanted some bands to record those songs to simply go on the soundtrack. And we went in for one day into a recording studio, and we had, we had a choice of three songs. One was a Barry, uh, which is named Barry Manilow. We said no to that straight away. The second one was uh, It A Lovely Day, and because it had that big long note vocal in it, Marty was like, oh, we should do that one. And then we had this little obscure 1960s song, Love Is All Around. Mm -hmm. And and the reason we chose that is because it was so empty. There was was an opportunity for us to put a stamp on it and make it something different. Um, And that's all we did. We had fun with it for about eight, nine hours in the studio, and the rest became history. We thought it was a B-side. We thought it was going to be like, yeah, just a little song to put on the D-side and, you know, a, a little moment that, uh, um, to fill a day. And it turned out to be a world beater. An, an extraordinary thing to be number one for, well, 15 weeks, the second longest serving number one of all time. Do you reckon you would have um, broken the record? Because it was you that stopped it going on sale, wasn't it? It was wet, wet, wet that said enough's enough. We did. Um, th- there was two reasons for that. One is, is that... The, the, the kind of cynical side of it, we knew the sales were starting to drop, that it had peaked, um, but the, and it was starting to annoy everyone. But the second reason really was that it changed the people's perception of where it went. We went from being uh, a band of musicians, um, a group, you know, all four together, to being our singer being uh, singled out, paparazzi, you know, front page headlines, uh, got to remember, this was during the era of News of the World and, yeah, of course. and, and photographers in bushes. And it, it, we didn't like the celebrity. We tried to avoid celebrity, but that song really thrust our singing into the kind of celebrity world. Wow, and it was kind of almost a way of protecting Marty from what was going on and keeping yourself as a band. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Absol- that, that, that was the reasoning behind it. We, we had about four or five meetings over the you know the, the previous month saying, it, not again, seriously, is it going to do it again? Yep. Who on earth is still buying that song? But what we were noticing is, is we couldn't go and do any more work. We couldn't get into the studio to go and do um, new songs. Um, everything we'd ever done was being overshadowed. And at the same time, the pressure that was on us from kind of a personal life point of view, we just we had to just sit down and say we need to stop this because this is going to destroy everything that we've spent ten years trying to build up. See, the, the extraordinary thing is, I mean, you're still going strong now. Big, big tour, big arena tour actually uh, next yeah. year, which is uh, bringing uh, bringing you to uh, to Birmingham in mm. uh, February. If we can give that a little plug, do nice you re- plug there. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> do you do you think you'd sort of still be together and touring? Had you not sort of put a stop on it and said we need to get rid of Love Is All Around and take ourselves out of the spotlight again? No, I think all bands have a shelf life. Now, I know that we're back together. That's more to do with being mature and growing up. Bands 
naturally start off as young, young men, age 17, 18. Um, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have success, then the big wheels start turning and off you go at 100 miles an hour, and it doesn't really stop. And what happens in that period is you're, you're concentrating on your career, but you're forgetting how to live a normal life. You, you, you're you always on the go. You're, you're always trying to, um, I don't know, sustain or, or increase your kind of success. Mm. Um, and the, what happens naturally with all bands is they get to a point and the individual members start growing up, I guess, and start saying, you know, I don't want to every day for the next 40 years always be thinking what's the next single um what's the next interview uh, you know the, uh, so what happens with band is they naturally break up they naturally come to an end point and then with us seven eight years after we've all split up and kind of fallen out the, the way that all bands seem to do is we sit down and we actually go we had something special and if we control it properly which means what can we go and release records when we feel like it where can we tour when we want to um, and not have to always have that pressure of building a career, then then you can come back together. And, and we've managed it. We've got this balance going where Marty can do his theatre, Graham can do his solo stuff. I can sit up in Glasgow bringing my family up and be very happy with it. Mm-hmm. And then once every year or every couple of years, we all get together and say, right, we're wet, wet, wet. And, we, you know, and I think we, the name wet, 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 and I guess the real thing is the songs that we released over that 10 years, they resonate with people. They they. They still have a. They still want to come along and share the excitement of a live show with us. So yeah, that's why we're back on the road next year. Yeah, and still enjoying yourselves while you're at it as well, and you're all sort of still pals. I feel as if I'm 14 years of age when I'm on that stage. It's so exciting. Oh, bless you! That, see, that's got to be the most important thing. If you enjoy what you do and you never work a day in your life, do you? Yep, that's it. Um, We've been incredibly lucky, and we know we're lucky. We're always kind of pinching ourselves. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we'd done a gig down in Portsmouth in front of 20,000 people, and we just at one point, we all looked at each other on stage. Again, it was love is all around. Hmm. And you just kind of go, look at this. This is special, you know. It's no longer lighters. Now it's phones that are held up, isn't it? All the phones are all swaying back. That's a weird thing. Yeah, it is yeah. a weird thing. I can't get my head around that. But, you know, it's 21st century. If you're still rocking it, you've still got it. Listen, Tommy, thanks so much for speaking to us today. Tommy Cunningham. Oh, bless. He's one of my favourite people ever to speak to. What a lovely bloke. Tommy from Wet, 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 then...